do believe once I get the smog pump on here, I'm going to be able to get this thing to idle really low. Because, like I said, it's uh, more of a pulsating jet of air going through the reactor right now because of the cycles of the engine. And I do believe once I get the pump on there, it's going to battle that problem. It's going to make it real smooth, and I'll be able to idle it down way low. I just have to wait and see, and I'll make a video of it when my parts come in. And I'm just trying to get this thing running halfway decent before I put a load on it. Right now I just play around with it. I can stop this thing with my foot. I always have been able to, even with the factory setup. And uh, I take this little bar for shits and giggles. But it's at low RPM, so I don't want to put too much pressure on it. on that pulley. You gotta take it or leave it. Now I'm a little out of breath now. Uh, I'm a smoker. I'm not used to doing that shit. I think once I get some air fuel management on it, you know, uh, like a little electronic control some people are working on, or I know one person really, and uh, I can have two valves right up in here. One for fresh air and one for fuel. I can have the, res uh, the reservoir tank along with the sludge kind of chamber. Where all this heavier crap, they don't want to break down in the reactor, so they put in this damn fuel. It can sink down and fall out of the air fuel mix. This is all what I'm working on right now. All right, now I'm at 23 minutes. Uh, did a pretty good run time on that, just playing around with it, but it's been running at lower RPM most of the time. And I've used uh, about half the fuel. A little over. Yeah, no, about half. And this right here is uh, the 89 octane. It's not the 87, and it's not the 93 or 91, whatever the hell that shit is. And uh, there's different types of gas, it seems like it out of the pump. Some of it's like clear as water and uh, some of it's yellow as piss.
you guys notice how I do that. You know, I, I like to uh, cut back on the gas, and then right after that, man, I'll shut this valve down and keep up the vacuum through the reactor. Oh, and there's one other thing I did on this thing that I think, I do believe helped out a little bit. Um, I don't have another one to show you, but this is close to it. This is bigger. Uh, this is for a compression fitting. It's one of those compression nuts. This is a half inch. But I took one from a one quarter size compression fitting and I stuck it in there up against the rod, just or up against the bottom of the tube, inner tube, just like that. And it's kind of like a funnel shape on the inside of here. Uh, very slightly. And the other one was, uh, you can see it better, and it was a lot smaller hole, you know, a quarter of an inch. And, uh, and that's what I have actually as my bottom rod stop because I've had pretty good luck using little nuts like these to stop the rod from going down in the carburetor and uh, making a little small orifice so right on the front of the inner tube seems to help a little bit but I'm running close to 30 minutes so I'm going to go ahead and set it down so I don't have a hard time uh, splitting it up into three, three segments yeah. I wish uh, YouTube would allow me to upload a 30 minute long video, but I haven't ever been able to do it. Guys, I think I got a few minutes left. Let's see what this rod looks like in here. Alright, uh, unhook this bastard. Ay ay ay. I do not know if you guys can see on the inside of that. The camera may not focus, but that's where I got that uh, little quarter inch uh, compression fitting at. And uh, this is my rod. I'm going to show you. Fresh out of the reactor. Nice and hot. Nothing real special about it. I just figured I'd show you guys. And, uh, oh, fuck it. Oh, man, I've seen people do that before. Drop these motherfuckers. Because they're hot as hell. I do not know if you guys can... See that? But the stainless steel, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but Cardi, get away! Get! Go on, get! The stainless steel doesn't get the scorch marks uh, like the 4130 does. And this is uh, 440. It's very magnetic. I mean, almost as much as mild steel, in my opinion. And, uh, you can see the little slight swirl patterns. They're real tight swirls. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to go from there. I'm going to check the magnetic signature on it later until we're spinning right in the center of the rod. If you guys can see it. Alright, that's it.